Hello everyone! Today we will be talking about the best spells in the game. That includes all of the spells up to the circle level of 6. If you will notice some utility spells missing, it is because I already have a video on utility spells best used out of combat and some of them in it as well, so feel free to check it out. But in this video I will focus on the offensive and also the very neat spells you can use in combat that I didn't include in my previous video. Remember that if I skipped over some spells it doesn't mean that I think they are useless, I just want this list to be pretty concise and not take too much of your time so if I skip something it doesn't mean that it's bad just remember that it's just my personal list that I used the most during my 120 hours of playtime that I so far have in my main playthrough. Although in total I have much more hours than that. Yes, that is one of the reasons why I didn't upload a video in the past couple days. I have been playing Baldur's Gate 3 for almost two weeks now and I'm trying to find all the creative and cool ways to share my discoveries with you guys and girls. I originally planned to include all spells but the video took me so long to make so I decided to split it and today we're gonna talk about the wizard and sorcerer spells and also some bard spells and I'm gonna make another video for the divine classes later on. So I hope you will find this video useful and let's get into it. But before we get into the video I wanted to thank today's sponsor which is Bloodline Heroes of Litas. And I have to say I'm really happy with this one. When people like Moist Critical and D&D Deep Dive was promoting them I knew this is a good game to pick for my first sponsor. In Heroes of Litas you enter a dark fantasy RPG. You can create your own unique legendary champions by combining bloodlines like the elves, demons, demigods, orcs, dwarves, lycans, dragonborn, vampires and even more. With its innovating air system and breathtaking visuals, Bloodline takes RPG and gacha gameplay to an entirely new level. You can actually mix and match races, marry them together and create a more powerful race, which you can then use to combat your foes. The game is completely free to play, you can start right away by simply downloading the game on Android or iOS and if you download the game using my QR code you will get a starter pack worth 20 bucks. I must say that the game is graphically stunning, providing a top tier visual experience on mobile phones and smart pads as well, so you can enjoy expanding your collection on whatever device you want. You can actually combine all those different heroes together by marrying them and creating an even more powerful bloodline. There is over a thousand possibilities of hybrids and endless things you can do to add to your lineups and matchmaking strategies. The hybrids inherit not only the talents and traits of their parents but also their unique appearances passed down from each family tree and fused into one. Bloodlines is also constantly getting updated and every two weeks new companions for each gender are getting added to the game. So the fun in creating new hybrids never ends. There is also even PvP in the game and all players can obtain uniquely designed hybrid champions called Bloodcraft Legends. There is also the aspect of building your own kingdom and expanding your economy with strategic gameplay. You can also follow the many interesting storylines played by real actors in beautifully rendered scenes. Also, the first 30 players who will leave their in-game account and username ID in the first pinned comment section below will receive a free legendary female orc champion called Ugrul. It is actually one of the best warriors to carry you in the game. So download the game for free right now on both Android and iOS. Use the link in the description or you can scan the QR code that's on the screen right now if you are viewing on the PC. Using my link will get you a starter pack worth 20 bucks which will include 100,000 gold, 1 summoning crystal and 100 diamonds. And that's the end of the message from our sponsor. Thank you very much Bloodline Heroes of Litas, it was a good excuse to show my mug once in a while and now let's get into the video. So let us start with the Wizard and Sorcerer School of Magic, going all the way to the beginning with the first Circle of Spells. So first off, probably the spell that you're gonna use the most on the first circle and also what most classes multiclass into the sorcerer or the wizard to get this spell exactly. Which is the shield spell which is powerful all throughout the whole game. What it does is that on reaction you will add 5 armor to your armor class, which is really really powerful to avoid all the upcoming damage. You will keep this 5 armor until the start of your next turn. It is just an incredibly powerful spell to always keep in your arsenal ready to go. Another staple of the Wizarding School of Magic is of course the magic missile. While it doesn't do a lot of damage, it is a great source of disrupting your enemy spells. What it does is help you disrupt enemies concentration. Each upcast of the spell adds another missile, which is another concentration check that the enemy has to make in order to avoid getting their spells disrupted. Next up we have protection from evil and good that not only the wizards and sorcerers can use but also clerics, which is a spell that is very handy to have because elementals, face, fiends and undead will not be able to charm or frighten 
frighten you anymore. And you will also be harder to hit because enemies of this type will have disadvantage on their attack rolls. Then we have the mage armor spell which is only good if you don't plan to wear any armor. And remember that humans and some other races actually have light armor proficiency already included when you choose them as a race. So that will make the spell pretty redundant to them but if you're gonna play a class that doesn't have light armor and you don't plan to wear any armor like being a monk for example then the spell can be pretty useful for you. Next up we have the staple of early levels which is Grease. It is just an amazing spell that disrupts enemies movement and will make them fall prone which will get you advantage on your attack rolls against them. It will just slow them down and will make your life a whole lot easier especially on early levels but it will stay relevant on later levels as well. Enhanced Leap is also a great utility spell especially if you don't have much strength which as the name suggests will just make you jump further away. Can be very useful if you don't want to use Misty Step for example. But remember that unlike Misty Step jumping does provoke attacks of opportunity. False Life is simple but great because you're just gonna add more health to your health pool. And it actually scales with levels. Just remember that it won't stack with Armor of Agathis. Sleep you can actually upcast to affect more hit points than 24 later on but personally I don't use it very often because enemies especially on tactician difficulty usually have more hit points than sleep can affect anyway even if you upcast it but I can definitely see some people using it more often. Tasha's is great if enemies won't resist it and Thunder Wave can be very useful especially on characters that don't have much strength and they don't rely on the shove action. You will send enemies to their death very often with this spell. Long Strider is another utility spell that lasts all day and doesn't require concentration so if you have a spare slot for it it's always good to have. Chromatic Orb is great and can be upcasted for more thunder damage especially if you're a storm sorcerer it's a great tool to have. It will be a great low level damage source for you. Burning Hands can be good if you plan to stand in melee and play some sort of a spell sword character and if you pick a draconic bloodline that makes your fire spells more powerful it can scale pretty nicely. Other spells like Featherfall and Disguise Self I already discussed in my utility spells video. On spell level 2 we have Detect Thoughts which can be useful in conversations, see invisibility which has its uses against the various enemies in the game that actually do go invisible quite a bit, Shatter is a pretty good AoE especially if you're gonna scale your thunder damage with the likes of the Storm Sorcerer or the Tempest Cleric, invisibility is very useful but I already discussed it more throughoutly in my other video, Mirror Image is great because it doesn't require concentration and it will make you much harder to hit, Blur would be good if it wouldn't require concentration, then we have Misty Step, probably the biggest staple of level 2 spells. I already talked about it in my other video but it is so good that we have to mention it again. It's basically a teleport and it uses a bonus action so you can still cast a more powerful spell on the same turn that you're gonna get away from an enemy. And the best part is it doesn't provoke attacks of opportunity. So it's a totally must have spell. Magic weapon gets redundant very fast because it's just a plus one and you're gonna find the plus one weapons very early on in the game. And on top of that it requires concentration so a completely useless spell in my opinion. Then we have knock which actually opens a lot of locks in the game which means that for the most part you would not even need a sleight of hand character in your party in order to open most locks in the game. But still there are quite a bit of locks in the game that has a DC bigger than 30 and then you're gonna still need your rogue in the party. Or just someone that has a pretty beefed up sleight of hand ability. Still knock is great especially on a wizard if you have spell slots to spare. Hold person is amazing when it lands as you're gonna have automatic criticals against the target that is held in place. Enlarge and reduce have both in combat uses and out of combat uses because you're gonna be able to get into places that you normally wouldn't especially if you're gonna make yourself smaller. But honestly I prefer to use the disguise self spell for this because if you're gonna become a smaller race you can get into most places as a gnom and stuff like that. So from what I learned you don't really have to use your enlarge reduce on someone to make it for the utility part of the spell and it's simply great when you want to beef up your weapon damage. Still it is a concentration spell so it's good to remember that. Dark vision is of course useful if you don't have dark vision already from your race. Darkness I already talked about in my previous video. Now Cloud of Daggers is an amazing spell to control the battlefield. It does take concentration but if you're gonna fight in some choke points it is a continual damage on the enemy for up to 10 turns. Arcane Lock has some utility uses and you can actually lock enemies behind some doors. I'm sure there will be some videos of using this spell creatively and locking enemies out of rooms sooner rather than later. Now spells level 3. Some of the most infamous spells lie in this circle which we're gonna go over through right now. First up of course we have to mention the fireball which no self-respecting wizard and especially sorcerer will leave their home without. It does great amount of damage especially when you unlock it on level 5 and you can end fights with well placed fireball very fast but in my opinion it is not the best spell in this circle at all. The spell that is actually the best in this circle in my opinion is haste. It is probably the best buff in the game. In Baldur's Gate 3 it grants you an another whole action that you can use on your turn meaning that 
that if you cast it on your fighters and other melee classes or even ranged, you will effectively double the attacks you can make per round. Similar to Action Surge, but it actually lasts whole 10 turns. Then you're gonna become lethargic and be stunned for one round, but it is well worth the cost. And if you're gonna be a sorcerer with twinned spell, you can actually haste two characters at the same time while holding concentration. A really, really, really powerful spell in Baldur's Gate 3. And then we have another one of my favorites that I would never leave home without, is the counter spell. I cannot count how many times I have counter spelled the enemy powerful magic spell in order to survive, especially on the tactician difficulty. It is however important to note that if the spell level that the enemy casts is higher level than 3, then you must succeed an ability check in order to nullify it. The difficulty of which is based on the spell's level. Still a ridiculously powerful spell, especially if you're gonna have more than one character in your party that can use it. Another spell I actually forgot to talk in my previous video with the utility spells is Gasu's Form, I hope I spelled that right. It's great to take when you want to avoid damage but also move to a different place. It gives you both mobility and also survivability. But remember that you can't make any actions while being in this form. So it is purely defensive and mobility based. Hypnotic pattern when it lands is also great, because it affects all the enemy on the field. And on top of that, you can even cast it when you're silenced. And honorable mention to animate dead, which can be useful if you need more bodies on the battlefield. Level 4 spells. One of my favorites here is Wall of Fire, which is like an improved Ring of Blades in a way. Especially when some enemies don't have anywhere to go if you're gonna trap them inside this Wall of fire they're gonna take constant damage throughout the whole fight. Just remember that it does take concentration. Stone skin is great if you're not gonna use your concentration on other spells like the wall of fire or haste because you can cast it on your fighters to take a lot less damage from most damage sources. Phantasmal Killer is a concentration spell sadly, but it is great when it lands and actually very useful. Fire Shield is great as it doesn't take concentration and will improve your resistance to fire and cold damage and also retaliate with some additional damage to the enemy. Greater Invisibility is always handy to have, because it's basically an improved version of invisibility that doesn't break as easily. Ice Storm is great if the enemy is resistant to fire damage for example, and also has a pretty large AoE range. Minor Elemental is great if you need an additional body on the battlefield, and Banishment can be very useful when it lands. Again, just remember that most of those spells are concentration, so pick and choose which one you think is the best for the given situation. Dimension Door is like Misty Step on steroids, because you can now teleport both yourself and someone adjacent to you to teleport somewhere else, so you can reposition in the fight more easily. Now we're at level 5 circle of spells already. And here we have such great spells as Telekinesis, which some of you might remember a similar spell from Divinity Original Sin 2. You can throw a creature or an object up to 18 meters away. You can probably guess for yourself how creative you can get with this spell, and it has a lot of uses both for objects and creatures you can throw around. Conjure Elemental is, well, an even better version of the Conjure Minor Elemental, just a more beefy dude that you can summon, and they will follow you until they die or until you rest. Cloud Kill can be very powerful, as Poison is a very nasty status, just remember that undeads and some other creatures will be resistant to it. Cone of Cold speaks for itself, if you like the cone type of spells and you don't want to rely on fire spells, it is a lot of damage you can do with this spell. Dominate Person and Hold Monster, again, are great when they land, but because they are concentration spells, I usually focus on haste and other stuff, then using the holding spells of this kind, but they can still be very useful if you're gonna focus your build on those. And Wall of Stone is a great utility spell if you want to block off some enemies. And then finally, when you reach character level 11, you will unlock the the last circle of spells in Baldur's Gate 3. Here some of my favorites include Chain Lightning, which is just a massive damage spell that bounces into others. If you decide to be a storm sorcerer or dip into the Tempest Cleric, this spell can annihilate a lot of enemies. And while talking about destruction, let's talk about Disintegrate, which does even more singular damage to an enemy when it lands. Just remember that if you disintegrate your enemy, it will actually turn into dust and the gear that they had on themselves will actually turn to ash as well. So personally, I don't use it too much because because I don't want to miss out on potential good loot of the bosses and stuff like that. But if you want to use it on something that you know doesn't contain much important loot, then be my guest and disintegrate some fools. Eyebite can be really good because you can recast it every turn, without spending a spell slot, so it can be the best bank for your buck from level 6. You can put creatures to sleep with this spell and also inflict sickness and dread. Very good pick if you want a spell that you can recast from level 6. Flesh to stone I personally didn't use much. Globe of invulnerability can be very useful if you need to be for a while and don't want others to hit you. It's a great spell to recoup during combat. Arcane Gate I actually must admit I didn't test yet, so feel free to tell me how good it is and if you found good uses for it. And the last spell that I like a lot is Sunbeam. It can not only blind targets and do some respectable damage, you can also recast it every turn without spending a spell slot, and if the enemy saves they will still take half damage. 
Now let's talk about the bard spells while skipping the obvious healing spells and also some utility spells that I already explained in my previous video. First up we got heroism which requires concentration but can be pretty useful early on and it also prevents you from being frightened while giving you some additional hit points. Fairy fire is very useful to reveal the obscured enemies and you will also get advantage on attack rolls against those targets affected by this spell. Level 2 has the enhance ability spell which can be very useful especially out of combat to help with the skill checks. Heat metal can be good against enemies that hold weapons in their hand, and Crown of Madness is very useful when it hits. On level 3 the only noticeable spell different from the wizard spell list is Speak with Dead, but you will already gain access to this kind of spell from various other sources in the game, so I wouldn't recommend wasting a spell slot on this spell. Actually, I should mention Feign Death as well, which can be very useful. If you need a break during combat and you don't want the enemy to hit you, it's a decent spell to recuperate. On circle level 4 we get Freedom of Movement, which is a great spell if you don't have this effect from an item or from your class, because some classes like the monks or rangers can get it by default on later levels. But other than that, a very useful spell to have and it doesn't require concentration and it will last for an entire day. On circle level 5 you get the very useful Greater Restoration, which is a great spell to have as a bard. Mask your Wounds, especially if you're gonna put some healing items on your bard, can be pretty useful in a pinch to heal your party. Seeming can be pretty useful if you want to disguise your entire party, and the most uses I got out of it is when you need your entire party to be of the smaller race in order to fit through some holes that you normally wouldn't be able to get to. On level 10 as a bard you actually get to pick from a whole plethora of different spellcasting classes to add to your repertoire. And here the main recommendations are of course spells like Counterspell, Haste, but you can also pick something from the Cleric list like the Spiritual Weapon, Spirit Guardians, Guardian of Faith, or even Armor of Agatis. And finally on level 11 you will be able to pick from Otto's Resistible Dance and Eyebite which we already talked about. Otto's is hilarious but also a great spell on its own. You will have advantage against the target that is dancing and they will have disadvantage on attack rolls and dexterity saving throws. A staple that I would definitely pick as a bard. And that concludes our list of spells for today. Let me know if you found it useful and what other spells you discovered on your playthrough and did I miss something? Let me know in the comments below. If there is a spell that you used a lot and I didn't talk about I would love to hear it in the comments. Thank you so much for watching and again sorry for not posting a video the last couple days but I just found playing Baldur's Gate 3 irresistible the past week and I hope you'll forgive me but on the good side of things I found a lot of stuff in Baldur's Gate 3 that I want to share with you in this month so there will be way more videos to come. Also I will be starting an evil playthrough on my Twitch channel so visit me there if you want because I will be finally getting back into streaming soon. Again thank you very much for watching, stay tuned for future videos and I'll see you again very soon.